What's going on YouTube? Team Movies here. Here is my throwback segment where I talk about the films that turned 10, 20, 30, and 40 this week. Alright. The films celebrating their 10th anniversary. Oh boy, cannot believe these are 10. Uh, we of course got Nightcrawler. The movie that probably should have gotten um, Jake Gyllenhaal an Oscar nomination, by the way. Of course, you guys don't know much, much about Nightcrawler. It also starred Renee Russo, who I also think should have gotten an Oscar nomination, as well as... This was also the movie, I guess you could say, really put Riz Ahmed on the map. This was like his breakout role. You also had the late, great Bill Paxton was in this. You know, in it, you got uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, who plays uh, Louis Lou uh, Bloom, a stringer uh, who records violent um, events uh, late at night in L.A. and sells the footage to a local uh, television station. And this movie is really true. You know, Jake Gyllenhaal definitely really uh, gave a terrific performance here. Again, he should have gotten an Oscar nomination. Why didn't he? It's beyond me. Rene Russo was terrific. Very intense at times. I mean, if you guys have not seen Nightcrawler, definitely give it a go. Alright, also turning 10, we got the movie Horns. Now, Horns is a very interesting little uh, horror thriller here. It was, direct, it was directed by Alexandra Aja, who also gave us films like The Hills Have Eyes remake, uh, Piranha 3D, Crawl. He just put out that Halle Berry film, Never Let Go. This movie also is, is actually based on a book by Joe Hill, who's actually the son of Stephen King. He also wrote the book for The Black Phone, which also got turned into a feature. And this movie also stars Dan Radcliffe, Heather Graham, a very young Sabrina Carpenter, uh, you also had uh, Joe Anderson, Juno Temple, and if you guys don't know much about the story, it stars Dan Radcliffe as a young man falsely accused of uh, murdering his girlfriend, who uses his newly discovered paranormal abilities to uncover the real killer. Horns is a really, a, a very, really weird uh, film. Like, you actually have uh, Dan Radcliffe having horns on his head, which is interesting to see. The, like, the movie gets very crazy throughout, it's very in, um, interesting. A uh, fast, like a very cool fancy horror film worth giving a go. So, yeah, it didn't really get talked about as much when it was released, but really, this is a little film if you guys have seen it. All right, also turning on um, ten is a very boring film called Before I Go to Sleep, which stars the likes of Nicole Kidman, Mark Strong, Colin Firth. Uh, it's pretty much just like a, a psychological uh thriller um that a little forgettable to be honest there. So. All right, now films turning 20 this week. Wow. We, of course, got the very first Saw. Of course, you know, uh, the movie that actually put... I believe this was actually James Wan's first feature, if I'm not mistaken. You know, of course, written by Leo Winnell. Holy cow, I cannot believe Saw is 20 years old this week. You know, it, of course, you had Carrie Elwes, uh, you know, Danny Glover. I mean... Who, of course, uh, we got Billy the Puppet. Who does not love the original Saw? You know, very um, bloody, like, you know, very intense at times. Of course, some really cool traps that I could probably never get out of. Uh, but, of course, the start of a major franchise. You know, of course, a year after we will, of course, go get uh, Saw 2, Saw 3. Like, it, it really seemed like almost every year there will be a, a new Saw movie. And, of course, now, we've still had Saw recent, like, you know, the Chris Rock one, um, and of course Saw X last year. But they haven't really, like, cranked them out as much as they used to. But, yeah, from, like, 2004 to 2010, they'll, they'll be cranking out Saw movies each year. And the original one is no exception. Of course, yeah, yeah this was actually James Wan. Like, the movie that really put James Wan on the map. And so, yeah, if you guys never seen the original Saw, for some reason, go watch the original Saw. It's a terrific one. All right. Also turning 20 is the Ray Charles biopic, Ray. The movie that won Jamie Foxx his first ever Oscar is the extraordinary life of um, story of Ray Charles, a man who fought uh, harder and uh, went further than anyone ever thought possible. Of course, you had Carrie Washington was in this, Regina King, Lorenz Tate, uh, Terrence Howard. Ray is an excellent film. You know, Of course, Jamie Foxx playing uh, Ray Charles was terrific. He really embodied Ray perfectly. You know, really sounded a lot like Ray. I, I mean, this was actually either before or after Ray Charles passed. I cannot remember if Ray Charles actually saw this film or not. But, yes, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting one. You know, Jamie Foxx, 
Like, he was actually one of the few actors who actually get nominated for an Oscar for about uh, two films in one year. You know, because he also got a supporting actor nomination for Collateral. And, of course, he won his Oscar for Ray, which well-deserved there. I guess, you, could, you know, Jamie Foxx obviously did stuff beforehand, but I feel like this is a really the movie that really showcased how great Jamie Foxx could be, you know? All right. Now, us turning uh, 20, we got the movie, another Nicole Kidman film, Core Birth, directed by John, John DeGlazer, who recently gave us his own of interest last year. And this also starred Nicole Kidman, Lauren Bacall, and the film follows Anna, who becomes convinced that her dead husband, Sean, is reincarnated as a 10-year-old as a, um, child. And this is a very weird film. I mean, it's not really a movie you could rewatch over and over. But Nicole Kidman does a great job. The one who plays the kid, uh, Cameron Bright, who I believe will go on... Yeah, he actually will go on to appear in the Twilight films. He was uh, really terrific in this. A, a very, really weird and interesting film worth giving a go. All right, turning dirty, we got the film Stargate, directed by Roland Emmerich, starring uh, Kurt Russell, James Spader. You know, the plot, of course, uh, stands on the premise of a uh, wormhole um, en enabling traveling uh, to the similar uh, device elsewhere in the universe. And it's a really intriguing one, a really decent sci-fi element. Of course, Roland Emmerich will go on to direct uh, Independence Day. He also gave us some not-so-good stuff like Moonfall. But Stargate is definitely one of his, like, one of his better films outside of Independence Day. It's a really cool sci-fi um, film worth giving a go. Uh, James Spader was terrific in this. Uh, Kurt Russell. Who doesn't love Kurt Russell, right? Really, this is, um, one. They should totally reboot Stargate when he's at his anyway. Also turning, uh, dirty, we got The Last Seduction. Starring Linda, uh, Frontino. I had a crush on her when I first saw this film. I once saw this movie at a time where I was not supposed to watch these type of movies, but hey. Um, you also had like uh, Bill Palman, Peter Berg, and pretty much um, a div it's pretty much about this uh, devious woman who steals her husband's uh, drug money and hides in a small town where she meets the perfect uh, dude for her next game. And Linda Fron uh, Frontina, who also appear in uh, in Dogma, I believe. Uh, yeah, she, she was yeah, she was really great in this. She, she doesn't do a whole lot anymore, but yeah, this was, of course, a really interesting erotic thriller, worth giving a go. Uh, very uh, risque at times, uh, very filthy, if you really look at it. I mean, if you guys haven't seen The Last Seduction, give it a go. I mean, the 90s and 80s always had some really cool uh, erotic thrillers, whether you talk about Fair Attraction, Basic Instinct. Like, I, I feel like this movie, of course, did go around a release at, during the hype of Basic Instinct, and they, they're obviously they were trying to be Basic Instinct, but not as good as Basic Instinct, obviously. Alright, also turning on um, 20, not really a lot to go by here, we got The Road um, to Wellfill, directed by Alan Parker, starring the likes of uh, Anthony Hopkins, Matthew Broderick, Dana Carvey, who's great as Joe Biden on SNL, by the way. And it tells the story of a doctor and the clean living um, advocate of uh, John Harvey Kellogg and his method employed um, on the Bow Creek uh, Sanitarium at the beginning of the 20th century. Not really that much of a remarkable film, to be honest here. There's also Silent Four, directed by Driving Miss Daisy director Bruce uh, Beresfield Ford, also starring Richard Dreyfuss, Linda Hamilton, Liv Tyler, and it focuses on a um, child with autism who is uh, the only witness to the savage uh, double murders of his parents. Very interesting thriller right there. There's also Squatanto, A Warrior's Tale, which is also forgettable. Now, this movie does star Pocahontas herself, uh, Irene B um, B Bedard. Uh, you also have uh, Dumbledore himself, Michael Gambon. And it's pretty much loosely based on actual historic Native um, American figure, uh, Squatano, and his uh, life prior to, and including the arrival of Mayflower in 1620. Not really. I don't really remember that, to be honest. Alright, film's turning 40 this week. Oh, uh, we got the Mick Jagger classic, Blame, Blame It on the Night, uh, where his uh, mother's um, death forces a military cadet um, to hit the road with a rock star father um, he never knew. Now, this was actually written by Mick Jagger, and uh, not really that, um, not really that, um, to be honest here. 
Uh, there's also The Killing Field, which stars uh, John Malkovich, Craig T. Nelson, Sam Watterson, uh, and it's where New York Times reporter Sidney uh, Skousberg, played by Alan uh, Watterson, is on the assignment covering the uh, Cambodian uh, Civil War with the um, help of local um, entrepreneur, interpreter uh, Def um, Pran, and America um, photojournalist uh, Al uh, Rockoff, played by Malcolm Batch. Not a bad little film right, right, right there. I mean, these 80s movies like aren't as remote as most 80s films from the 80s, but yeah. Also turning for you, we got Love Lines, uh, which stars the likes of Greg uh, Bradford, Michael Winslow. And it's pretty much like where um, prank playing students for rival uh, California High School wage um, a no hose uh, barred bout of the uh, bands here. So, yeah, like the 80s always had some really, some really iconic um, teen films of that uh, decade, but this wasn't Jimmer Malibu either. So, yeah, but that's pretty much it there. Let me leave you guys. What uh which of these films stand at you the most? To me, the ten year one is going to Nightcrawler. Who doesn't love Nightcrawler? Go watch Nightcrawler if you guys have seen it. Uh the twenty year one, I should probably say Ray, because Jamie Foxx was excellent in that. But the film that stands at you me the most with this one is actually gonna be Saw. The dirtier one is actually I should say Stargate, but I'm actually gonna go with the last induction. It's like so cheesy, but it's interesting to check out. And the four year one, not much to talk about the forty. I guess like the killing fields is the one. But anyway, drop comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell for notification. This is Hibbert Siren.